to really use what you learn to do some real-world projects, you'll need some programming skills nowadays to leverage all the tools, all the tools and software libraries that uh, um, have been developed, you know, in the last uh, several decades. And um, lastly, you'll need uh, some domain knowledge to either, you know, ask questions yourself, um, or you you need those domain knowledge to talk with the experts to really start working on the real world. Uh, data science project. So our curriculum design and also the course design are based on these three components and I'll talk uh, about that in a bit more details. So if you look at it from a different perspective, data science itself is, uh, you know, as a core here by itself, then it's interacting with different fields like IoT, Internet of Things, uh, Material Science, Digital Humanity, and also Drug Discovery and many others. And uh, that's what we call data science plus X, DS plus X. And following this paradigm, uh, we are dividing our um, curriculum as well as our, our individual module for, for the course into three corresponding components. Basically, we have some core courses on mathematical foundations if we talk about the curriculum level. And we have some uh, regular training sessions um, offered by TAMIS, the use of data science. Uh, and also the high performance research computing, which is a uh, super computing facility at PC Center at Texas a and And we are offering all these kind of regular training programs uh, early in the semester uh, on Linux programming, uh, Python, R, and the basics about how to use the big machines, how to get started on programming side. And then finally, we have some project-based data science training programs that we are working with um, our researchers, and also we encourage students to fund their own projects. So these are have been designed uh, to work as a semester long, or even sometimes this will be multiple semester effort to get the whole curriculum up and running. Um, but if you just look at uh, one course, uh, you can divide your course into three parts, or even, even more, depending on how how you know, how fine the structure you want your course will be. You can divide the first several, you know, modules in your course to cover some basics and fundamentals. And you can have, have some modules, uh, you know, teaching students how to get started. And then finally you get um, uh, asked them to propose some projects. And um, we have a master program created. I, I think we, we started a master, program, a master of data science program a couple of years ago and have been working on that for a while. And now it's uh, starting from this fall, we are offering this uh, Master of uh, Data Science, uh, Master of Science in Data Science program at uh, TAMIS. And uh, we also have uh, uh, funding opportunities for our researchers and faculty members to propose data science course. So they, they will be integrating our core material developed at TAMIS uh, with their own domain uh, knowledge so that they can design their own uh, data science best courses. And we are working closely with uh, all the researchers on campus to help them on, this, uh, on the course development. So particularly, uh, we are focusing on all these small, tiny modules to make sure all this will be working well uh, you know, together. Uh, and uh, we are focusing on graduate courses, short courses, workshops, etc. For the graduate courses, you know, it, it will be both on undergrad and granular levels. And we are offering spe special topic courses just to try out some uh, very specific uh, subject, research subject. Most of those uh, special, special topic courses are related to the particular research. A student will be getting involved in some particular domain and they will need some, you know, the, the faculty member will need some modules uh, from TAMIS to help them to develop some data science modules. We'll, we'll work with them and we'll give uh, guest lectures and uh, help them to integrate some material, help the student trained on particular subjects. So the short courses, as I mentioned, those are offered regularly at the early stage of the, uh, every semester. And um, students, while they are taking all the data science courses, they are taking all those uh, training courses as well. And for my course, for the course I was teaching, like computational data science course, I require my students to take at least the two of those short courses every semester. Um, I'll require a, a, a certificate of partic participation for those uh, short courses so that I know for sure that they went there and that they go there and, uh, and, and learn something. 
And also we're organizing uh, regular hang songs, data songs to get students uh, engaged. And particularly we are encouraging students to participate in international uh, competitions. And I'll talk a bit more about those. And I also supervising, uh, I'm supervising and sponsoring uh, student organizations um, uh, through the TAMITs, uh, you know, through a budget and TAMITs. And so then they can organize their own events and we can sponsor them on some of the, uh, some of the cost. So for the classroom teaching, we are trying to integrate a big room and, and a small room, uh, you know, together, which is actually a big concern for, um, as you probably know, um, it's, it's pretty big uh, in a size is 65,000 students. Uh, for engineering, we have about 25,000, you know, close to 20, more than 20,000 students in engineering alone. And um, to integrate large lectures, we can uh, have more time teaching time, teaching hours for our students uh, for smaller individual sessions. So that's basic philosophy, more for more. I think that's something I have been talking with the different department heads and even some deans from some colleges to ask them to see if we can crawl in some of the, these large courses so that we have more time for small individualized sessions. And of course, because of the pandemic, uh, almost everyone has been uh, doing all the remote teaching uh, in the last uh, year or so. So we are trying to see if we can leverage some online resources, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, on the project-based uh, learning and environment, we are working closely with our local research community as well as our operational units at NM. We are working with energy and utility and energy services folks and, and work with them to help predict the, the power consumption and help them to see how the chill water, hot water will be used during the, you know, the whole semester, etc. We're also working with our division of research, our VPRS office, vice president of our research office, and working with them to do some uh, development on to analyze the research capacity of NN. And uh, for this, uh, this one is uh, it looks like it's not relevant, but actually this is a very relevant to uh, data analysis now because for a lot of big data projects, students are supposed to be learning a, a lot more about high performance computing. So I have been leading uh, a team at NM to participate uh, a couple of international competitions for clustering uh, student clustering competition, and uh, you know not just them. I I myself learn a lot through these uh, events. So another one that is relevant is about building VR AR projects, and we are working closely with uh, with different uh, um, uh, you know researchers from different departments. And we are trying to build this uh, virtual environment for Texas Amarillo's campus, which is a brand new campus um, uh, designed to, um, to, to have a lot of new facilities over there. But we are trying to build this uh, virtual environment to, for training the, uh, our autonomous vehicles and also doing some other related research. It serves as a platform for many other projects. And this, the, the, the one I just mentioned previously, is uh, connect, it's connected to this auto drive challenge, which just finished in June. And our team, I believe, that we got the uh, number one, number two overall. Probably, I believe, is number one. Uh, the final, the overall score is it's, it's not posted on the website yet. But the dynamic event, we got number one uh, there. It's, uh, it's pretty good news. Um, the last thing I want to talk about some uh, some program I have been leveraging in the last uh, several years is called the uh, uh, Deep Learning Institute uh, University Ambassador Program. It's from Nvidia. They are giving away five hundred dollars for each event you are hosting on your campus. It's free. Uh, the all the materials is free for all the university use it. Of course, they're charging fees for external participants, but for university students, uh, it's free for everyone. Uh, you can use their online materials and also their cloud computing resources to host all these resources, uh, hosting uh, to host all these uh, uh, online workshops. And and actually, you can do this offline. And and uh, that's what I've been doing before the pandemic. Um, so you can get five hundred dollars to cover the refreshment and other things. And I think it's a very good thing for you to scale up. Uh, when we talk about more for more, this will be one thing to to get a lot of students involved to learn a bit more about deep learning and uh, data science, um, you know, if you have the facility to do that. And, um, you know, I have all the information here. I shared the slides. If you are interested, just click all the links and try to figure out, uh, you know, find the where to, to 
to, to get more information. And then Jill Bongo, who is a manager, was there. I, I know him pretty well. If you really want to get started and want someone to introduce you to them, uh, please, please feel free to let me know. I can just get you started. So that's all from me.